I'm Mark Richardson, uh, PhD in biology. My company is RiskLogic Scientific, though I've worked for Health Canada amongst other companies and departments. And I guess my claim to fame really is a risk assessment on de mercury exposure from dental amalgam that I did for the, uh, Health Canada in 1994-95. And then that sort of led to a number of studies looking at the evaluation or the risks posed by composite resins as a, as a possible um, alternative to dental amalgam that is spun off into looking at gold and ceramic dental materials and then um, you know trying to bring risk assessment I guess to the discussion table not just exposure not just efficacy as a dental material but looking at risks um, for potential health effects in, in the general population who might have dental amalgam fillings, that sort of thing. So that's what I do. Um, you asked about um, the whole issue of how much mercury do you get from tuna fish sandwich, if you eat a tuna fish sandwich, versus how much you would get from dental amalgam fillings, and you had asked me to take a look at that question. And I was able to track down um, information on the internet from a, I believe a physician who you know, made the claim that, oh, you get far more mercury from a tuna fish sandwich than you do from dental amalgam fillings. Of course, it was kind of a blanket statement. There was no definition by this person as to, well, how many tuna fish sandwiches was he talking about? Because you have to know how many sandwiches you eat, how much tuna is actually in each sandwich, how much mercury is in the tuna that's in the sandwich. And then you need to compare that to amalgam fillings. Well, how many fillings and et cetera. So the blanket statement really isn't defensible. There was no way to quantify or determine how this person, this physician, had reached their conclusion. So I redid all the calculations. And I would say if you have no amalgam fillings and you eat one tuna fish sandwich a day, you know what? You're going to have more mercury from tuna than you are from dental amalgam. And likewise, if you have one amalgam filling, but you never eat tuna, you're going to get more mercury from your amalgam fillings than you are from tuna fish. That just kind of makes sense. But in the scheme, in the balance of the scheme uh, of things, in terms of the average rate of tuna fish consumption by the U.S. population, compared to the average number of amalgam fillings held by members of the U.S. population, you actually get way more amalgam uh, exposure to mercury from amalgam than you do from tuna fish. The second aspect of that whole um, comparison isn't just the levels of exposure, but the risks. How, how does the amount of methylmercury you get from tuna fish compare to the amount of methylmercury that's safe to be taken in? And our, the US Environmental Protection Agency, they define safe dose as a reference dose or reference concentration. In this case, for methylmercury, it's a reference dose. That's the amount that a person in the population can be exposed to every day without concern about health effects. So how does the exposure from eating a tuna fish sandwich compare to that safe dose? And you can do exactly the same thing for dental amalgam. In fact, that's what I've been doing since 94, 95. It's looking at the exposure and how it compares to the safe exposure level for the mercury vapor that emanates from dental amalgam fillings. And the toxicity, if you look at those safe doses, or those safe exposure levels as a general definition of the toxicity of a substance, the safe level of exposure for mercury vapor is much lower than it is for methylmercury. Um, I can't define for you off the top of my head right now what those levels are. Uh, probably around 0.2 um, micrograms per kilogram body weight, I believe, for, for uh, methylmercury. And if you look at the level of exposure associated with the US EPA's reference exposure level, it's about 10 times lower. So that would imply, in general sense, that uh, mercury vapor is about 10 times more toxic, or potentially toxic, than is methylmercury at least based on all the information we have right now on their toxicity. So not only do you get a significant exposure to mercury vapor if you have amalgam fillings, the type of mercury you're being exposed to is generally about 10 times more toxic than the, the methylmercury that's coming from fish. 
So you've got to combine those two things to get a proper sense of the comparison of relative exposures and relative risks of tuna, tuna fish consumption and methylmercury exposure from tuna fish and then the uh, mercury vapor that emanates from your amalgam filters. So if, in general terms, you get more mercury from amalgam and it's a much more toxic form of mercury. And those two combine to make the risks posed by dental amalgam probably rather much more significant.